Hello guys, good afternoon. Uh, we're on a, a commercial property in, um, in Worthing. Um, I'm going to try and keep this brief because the wind's whipping in off the downs and I don't want this to be too sketchy in terms of audio quality. Um, core business, um, reviving um, green roofs that for whatever reason haven't been done well. But in the videos that I've been making so far, I haven't really had an opportunity to show you um, what um, like a, a floundering green roof looks like. Um, <clears throat> so this is a tiny patch um, of what's left of the, um, the sedum at this, um, this place. We were, we were maintaining it, we were called in to, to maintain it for, um, for a couple of years and we've been, the best we can do is, is apply some feed. There's one or maybe two species left, that's all. There probably were only three or four, um, would be my guess, um, when, when this went down. Um, <clears throat> we've um, we've replaced an area of sedum. That's the that's the kind of the, the draconian uh, nuclear option in terms of improving um, improving a, a green roof um, to go over it entirely. I'll talk about the one that we did last year, um, last summer in um, in a little while. But just before we move over there, I wanted to show you um, some of the basic things that can, um, that can go wrong with a green roof um, installation. Um, first of all, moving you down so that you can see better. As you can see, there are huge gaps um, uh, between all the plants. It's, it's really not worth having in ecological terms, definitely not in aesthetic terms. This is looked over by the canteen for the, uh, for the company, so the MD is investing, um, has been gradually investing in, um, in, uh, in improving for the, for the staff benefit. What you can see here is that immediately, immediately here I'm getting to the netting, there's an inch, there's an inch only of um, substrate. And what substrate there is, I would say it's very um, inch. There we are, we're at the, um, the geotex there. If you've been generous, you're saying 30 mil. Um, it's just been under specified. Um, the national guidelines, which are based on um, on German best practice, say, um, say that for a cedar blanket, it should be 60 mil, and then the blanket on top. Um, so, <coughs> push comes to shove, there's just not enough uh, material for the plants to survive in. You do hear um, uh, some suppliers saying that uh, because these, these, um, s uh, these plants, the sedum plants, grow in, um, in, um, in rocky outcrops in, um, in tropical climates that they should be able to, able to cope, but it simply isn't um, a rocky outcrop. The roots are, um, the roots are not um, well away from, um, from, um, from, the, from light, from the desiccating effects of wind. And, um, <coughs> Frankly, couldn't be. Frankly, couldn't be more um, more different. What's happened over a period of time is that there's been dieback. There's there's two, um, maybe a couple of species, maybe one more. There's the odd bit of fat hair and the, the south thistle that's living in here, living in here. But we're really not doing all that much. When you think about how amazing green roofs can be, like they're not a silver bullet, but but they they score more highly across a wider range of indicators than any other green tech. Um, that's that that's that's undeniable. They um, they can help hold water back. This one's not doing that because there's only 20 mil. They can uh, aid biodiversity. This one isn't doing that for reasons that you can uh, reasons that you can see. They um, they can um, when done right help um, add thermal mass to the building. There's good evidence from Chicago that um, uh, I think is it 85 percent less heat enters a building. I may need to correct myself on that figure, but it's a huge amount less heat enters a building with a 150 mil um, green roof build up on it than um, than would than would um, than would otherwise be the case. The main message I would say to drive home about all this is like just create the conditions that the plants need because surely the plants are the point. Um, <clears throat> don't skimp on um, on substrate. Invest all of the stakeholders in caring for the roof, caring for the plants. Like get invested in the in the outcome, not just in the um, in the upfront um, front capital spend, and then make sure it's delivered. Right, I'm going to quickly now jump across bumpy camera time to um, to the one that we did uh, last summer. It was leaving this one behind. Here now you can see. The difference, hopefully, it's not up in flower yet, but will be soon. I've um, I've had a quick squiz here, and there's um, there's now I'm terrible at identifying plants until the flowers come out. I'll hold my hands up to that, but there's um, <coughs> there's at least a dozen species that I can spot just a different um, 
just by their um, by the leaves you can tell there's a dozen species. Um, <coughs> we've um, we scarified back the um, the build-up that you saw there. We added edging, perimeter edging. You can see just tightening down there to enable us to bring up the um, bring up the edge. Overlaid with another 40 or 50 mil of um, substrate to bring us up to um, uh, guidelines. Um, a GRO guidelines this height and then overlaid it with um, with pre-grown wildflower turf from our good friends at the company called wildflower turf a bit of traffic there um, so this one in I've got a picture that we'll hopefully I'll see if um, one of the whiz kids can work out how to get onto the video showing you the, um, the three stages of development that it went through last year it is irrigated but we're very keen as always to communicate to people not to use the irrigation unless it's absolutely necessary um, and in terms of um, in terms of care, it's looked like this pretty much all winter. So you know, it's not um, it's not ornamental, but it's certainly a damp site better than that thing around the um, around the corner. And and it's, there's a load of plants here which are going to be doing their bit for the um, for the biosphere, Worthing's biosphere. And generally, as we, as we as we try to green our cities, cover our cities in plants, we want we want plants there that are actually going to be part of the food chain, part of. Um, that are ecologically meaningful for the little critters around that are going to help us to, uh, to put right some of the mess we've been making for the So, um, very quick visit now. I'm going to knock back some of this cooch grass, the fat hen take out. It's seed a little bit in the um, in the bare areas. And Bob's your uncle, that's going to be it until um, June. So today's visit will be 125 quid plus fat. If you're watching this video in two years' time, prices may have increased. Um, a little bit more of an intensive cut and remove in the um, in the spring, but I'll talk about that more in the um, in the next video. Just wanted you to see the difference that it can make when you build a little bit on the investment, the upfront investment that you've made already, or a, a green roof that you've inherited. That it's possible without too much trouble to get something much more meaningful in a very short space of time. All right, guys, I will. We'll see you again soon.